Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. For today's video, I'm going to be reading some of my subscriber scary stories. So if you're interested, grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and let's get straight into it. Let's start with story number one. Hi Daisy, I'm from El Paso, Texas. I came across your channel a few months ago wanting to listen to scary stories while working. And let me tell you, I got hooked immediately. I have binged all of them and can't wait until you come out with your next video with new stories. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Thank you for watching my videos, writing in. Thank you so much. I cannot say that enough. Thank you for writing in and I hope you see this video so you can see your story being featured on my channel. So thank you. Okay, but now I had to had to say that. But now let's go on with the story. Just a quick note before I give you a couple of stories. When I was younger, I was always afraid of the dark and going to dark places alone. Always hated certain rooms, closets, because they gave me scary vibes. Whether it was my own home or anyone of my family's homes. Because of that, I was always made fun of by my own family for being a scaredy cat. Love my fam, no hate. They were so rude, lol. Let's get started. So the first story is named The Girl. I lived with my mom and two sisters in my mother's humble two bed, one bath home. When I was around 11, 12 years old, I encountered my first ghost sighting. It was in my own bedroom that I shared with my sisters. I was always afraid of the closet in the room. It creeped me out so much. I always made sure it was closed before I went to bed and always needed to keep my bedroom door open. I'm the same way. I make sure there's oh that door right there, that door. I make sure that that door is always closed because uh uh they ain't not gonna catch me slipping. Anyways, it was a weekend and I remember staying up watching a TV show with my mom. It wasn't too late, maybe around 10 p.m. Once the show ended, I noticed that my mom had fallen asleep on the couch next to me. I kept on watching TV, but after a few moments, I felt the need to look into my room where my younger sister was already asleep. My older sister was out. I noticed a white form at the edge of the bed and assumed it was my little sister. She had long dark hair from what I could see. My eyes adjusted after a few seconds and noticed movement. That movement was my sister adjusting in her sleep. She was actually closer to the wall. I guess that white form noticed my realization because she suddenly turned her head to look straight at me. You could make out a pale white face, black holes for eyes, and nothingness for her mouth. I freaked out and covered my eyes and put my knees to my chest where I was sitting. I don't know how long I was in that position, but I mustered up the courage to look up and wake up my mom so she could go to sleep. I didn't tell her anything until the next day. She blew it off and said I was just seeing things. But as I got older and was out of her home, she ended up telling me she occasionally sees someone's small head peeking into her room when she's watching TV. I attached a layout of what my childhood home looked like. I'll leave it right here for you guys. So you can have a better picture of how I was able to look into the room from where I was sitting on the couch. So now onto her second story, shuffling feet. I can't remember what age I was when I experienced this, but it still gives me the chills to this day. I want to say a year or two older from my previous story. My abuelita lived with us because my mom helped take care of her while she had her dialysis treatments. She would sleep on one of the couches in the living room. My sister and I shared a bunk bed and I slept on the bottom bed. This night, nothing was different. I went about my day with no issues or weird feelings. It was bedtime and I finished closing the closet before I went to lay down to sleep on my bed. I fell asleep fast but ended up waking up. I wasn't sure what time it was but it was all dark and quiet. This told me that everyone else was asleep. I remember waking up confused as to why I was awake. I woke up facing the door. I didn't need to use the bathroom and I listened for a few minutes to see if I could blame it on someone snoring or something but there was nothing. I could hear faint snoring from my mom's room and living room, confirming that both my grandma and mom were still sleeping. I could also hear my younger sister asleep above. I thought nothing of it and adjusted myself to try to go back to sleep, my back now towards the door. After a few moments, I started hearing shuffling sounds, like someone wearing slippers slowly walking. Shuffle, shuffle, 
two seconds later, shuffle, shuffle, and so on. I figured it was my grandma getting up to use the bathroom. I heard the steps make their way from the living room to the hall and stop. My bedroom door is right next to the bathroom door, so I just waited to hear the tinkle of someone using the toilet. I waited and nada, nothing, silence. This was odd, but suddenly I started hearing the shuffling again. The moment I heard the shuffling enter my room, the entire room felt heavy. My ears started ringing. I couldn't move. I felt un miedo tan intenso que no pude respirar. I felt a fear so intense I couldn't breathe. I heard it shuffling closer and closer as I laid there, frozen in fear. My back still to the door where that thing was coming from. It suddenly stopped right behind me. I can feel the presence so strong, it felt as if someone was standing right behind me and if I moved, I'd bump them. I then felt hot breathing on the back of my neck. This made me panic to where I finally stopped holding my breath and I was able to move and I pulled my blanket over my head. The presence I felt got heavier and I can feel it now above me. My ears were still ringing along with another growling type noise. I couldn't move. I was hyperventilating at this point and all I could do was keep the blanket over me and tried not to make more noise than I was already making with my panicked breathing. Eventually, the horrible feeling presence disappeared as if it wasn't even there. I still couldn't find the courage to uncover myself. I don't know how long I was under the blanket. I fell asleep at some point and woke up when I felt hot from being under the blanket and it was already daytime. I told my mom all about it and she didn't say anything. Later on that week, she told me that she had spoken to a friend of hers who has a gift, speaks to spirits and does cleansings. Her friend let her know that the presence did not sound friendly or good. We ended up having a cleansing a couple of weeks later. Not a house cleansing, but a person cleansing or something. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I didn't experience much after that, but I still felt things here and there. That's all I have for now. There's more personal experiences and family stories I can bring in a later time, if you'd like to hear them. Thank you for taking your time and reading all your followers' stories. Sincerely, Paola. Thank you so much, Paola. Thank you. I wouldn't be able to read stories if you guys didn't send them. So thank you so much, Paola, for taking out the time to send your stories to me. And of course, I would love to hear it. I hope you share it soon so I can feature more of your stories in my channel. This was spooky, so I'm sure you have more. But I hope everything was cleansed out. It seemed like it was attached to you and not the house it really did seem like it was bothering you and no one else unless maybe your sisters have some experiences or your mom but it really does seem like it was targeting you so if you have any details about that left definitely let me know but thank you so much paola now moving on to the next story hello the name's jack jacobet jacobet or Joe, if you can't pronounce it. Thanks. <laughs> I found you on YouTube because my little brother watches you a lot. Oh, say hi to your little brother. So we thought we should share some of our family stories with you. Thank you so much. We don't know why these things keep happening in our family. It's like every family member has a story to tell about their paranormal experiences. I picked out some to tell today. It all starts with my mom. My mother has told me she experienced paranormal events ever since she was a little girl. Back in the 80s, when my mom was around 5 or 6, she lived in a small house with both her parents. She would sleep in the same room as them too. One night, when they were asleep, she felt her dad sit up from the bed. She heard him talking to her mom about a strange noise coming from the kitchen. My mom then sat up as well, and that's when she heard it. A light tapping noise coming from the kitchen. It sounded like dancing and jumping along with high-pitched giggling. Her dad grabbed the gun he had close to him and slowly got out of bed. He walked quietly, not wanting the intruder to hear him. Being the small house it was, there were no doors, just a curtain separating the two rooms. Her dad stood in front of the curtains for a while, building up his courage. He slipped his fingers through the curtains and carefully opened them just a bit to see who was there. My mom and her mom sat on the bed waiting for him to make a move like shoot or walk in on whoever it was but he didn't. 
He stood there with a confused and shocked face. Her mom got worried about what was happening so she too got out of bed and walked where he was. She peeked into the kitchen and the moment she did, her face became as shocked and confused as my grandpa's. Being the curious little girl she was, my mom jumped out of bed and walked in between of her parents' legs. What she saw was something that sent shivers down her back. Small men were dancing on the top of the table. Duendes. It has to be duendes. I know you're thinking, this is silly and I don't blame you. I laughed a bit when my mother told me because I thought she was kidding. But my mom wasn't the type to make these things up and we don't ever joke about these things. But back to the story, my mom told me that she could see the small people jumping and dancing on the table. The sound of their high-pitched laughter was a sound she wishes she could forget. But an event like this can traumatize a little girl for the rest of her life. She described them as some type of gnomes. Her mom took hold of her and took her back to bed. That's where she ended it, saying she was too scared to even remember what happened next. All she knew was that this wasn't the only time she experienced something like this. Her next story is what made me look at my toys in a whole new way. When she was still little, she remembers a time when her dad and her were visiting a friend's house. It was getting late, so her dad decided to sleep over for the night. The owner of the house put them in a room full of dolls, old-fashioned type of dolls, stuffed animals, and Barbies. They were all displayed on shelves and some were placed on rocking chairs or the floor. A room like this is already creepy enough. Anyways, after her dad got the bed ready, the two went to sleep. My mom started to wake up in the middle of the night due to some light tapping noise. She didn't think much of it at first. It could have been anything. When she was only half awake, she realized that the tapping noise sounded more like tiny footsteps inside the room. She turned in the bed to face away from her dad and see what was going on behind her. At that moment, her heart dropped and her face became paler than snow. The dolls that were on the floor had gotten up on their own two feet and started to walk around the room. Some just stayed sitting down and turned their heads to look around. When one of the Barbie dolls turned her gaze towards my mom, she nearly screamed. It was like they were inside the movie Toy Story, except this was real and a spookier version of it. My mom sat up on her bed and quickly woke up her dad. Her dad tiredly got up and looked at his daughter. What's wrong? He asked her. The dolls, they're walking, my mom whispered in a panic. Her dad shot out of the bed and took a good look around. He couldn't believe it. The whole room had come to life. He told my mom everything is alright and wrapped his arms around her and covered her with a blanket. My mom said she felt a lot safer when her dad held her close like that, but she could tell he was just as afraid as she was. I don't even know how she couldn't even sleep after seeing that, but the next morning, they left as soon as possible without telling the owners about what happened. Now I know why my mom refused to watch Toy Story with me when I was younger. She told me one last story. When she was around the age of six, her dad and her were at her aunt's house for a visit. They stayed there for a whole day until it was around 11 p.m. Her dad got off the couch and took my mom into his arms. He carried her to the door and was about to leave, but his sister insisted that he stay for the night because of the time. They didn't have a car at the time, so they were going to walk back home. My grandpa told her he was fine and that he could make it home safely with my mom. He wrapped her in a blanket and left. As he walked, my mom started to fall asleep on his shoulder, but before she could fully go to sleep, she felt her dad suddenly stop in his tracks. Feeling like something was wrong, my mom lifted her head up slightly and turned her head to see why they stopped. A few feet away under the streetlight was a male figure. She described him wearing a black coat and pants, and he was fairly tall. But the one thing that stood out was that there was no head to be seen. He was completely headless and was just standing under the light in the middle of the night. Dad? My mom said in a shaky tone. Hearing her distress, he threw the blanket over her and lowered her head back onto his shoulder. What is that? Her dad didn't respond to her. He stayed silent, not daring to move a muscle. Everything will be okay, he whispered to her. My mom felt like she was going to cry from all the tension. 
but before she knew it, she felt her dad take a sharp turn and sprint his way across the street. Once he was on the other side of the street, he still did not slow down. He kept running as quickly as possible like their life depended on it. My mom says she didn't even think about taking the blanket off her head, too afraid to see if those things were chasing them. Her dad didn't stop for a single rest until they got home. He placed my mother back down on her bed and stayed with her until she fell asleep. That was the last story she told me for the day. The strange thing is, before she told me this story, I was around 6 years old when I was playing at the playground at night, and not too far, I was sure. I saw a man wearing all black sitting on the swings without his head. These are just a few stories my family has. When I say everyone has one, everyone has one. My uncles, aunts, cousins, and even family friends. It would take an entire novel to tell the whole story. Your poor mother, Joe. Oh my gosh. Tell her I am so sorry that she had to go all through that, traumatized from an early age because I am pretty sure she saw duendes. I have a video if you are not familiar or anyone is not familiar with the topic, I'll leave that up here for you guys so you can get familiar with it. But she 100% duendes. That's 100%. She didn't even want to watch Toy Story. That's how traumatized she was. Pobrecita, that's crazy. What in the world? But thank you so much, Joe, for writing in. If you have any more stories, any more stories mira again like you said your uncles aunts and your cousins let me know i loved your stories so please if you can if you would like to share with us please do thank you so much and say hi to well hi brother little brother i'll just say it to you hi <laughs> thank you so much for watching and sending in your stories thank you now moving on to our last story Hey Daisy, this is a scary story I'd like to share. It's actually a really weird story that I can't explain to this day. Sorry, it's a long story. Don't say sorry, we love that here. We, I love that here, okay? This is the story. Let me start off by saying I'm a skeptical believer. By that, I mean I believe in the paranormal, but if something weird happens, I'm not gonna automatically assume it's paranormal. I have no proof of this, so sometimes I don't even believe it myself. But I will admit, this experience was beyond strange. I feel stupid saying I visited the back rooms. If you don't know what the back rooms are, they're basically a labyrinth of randomly segmented rooms and halls. They can look like grocery stores, warehouses, department stores, unfamiliar or familiar places. Sometimes I question myself, was it all a dream? Did it really happen? Did I make it up? So what could have this been? I don't know. <gasps> Ooh, I can't wait to find out. What the heck? I am confused, so let's begin. I was at the department store with my parents. At the time, I was around 16 or 17. We don't go that often anymore, but they used to go often and they'd spend so much time there. I hated going for that reason. This night, the store had very few customers and I only saw like three employees. We were in the kitchen area of part of the store. I suddenly had to go to the bathroom. I told my parents I was going to use it. They said they'd wait for me there. I left and went to the bathroom. I have never liked this particular department store's bathroom. They're nice, big, and clean, but there is this strange vibe to them. It's dimly lit and always empty. There's a big stall at the end and the rest are irregular sized stalls. I went to use the big stall at the end of the bathroom, the furthest from the bathroom door. I did my business, washed my hands, and left. This is the first weird thing I noticed. The energy in that department store had changed. I'm a sensitive person to energy. It was definitely off. No one could convince me otherwise. I shook it off as me being paranoid. The next thing I noticed was that the store seemed empty. No workers or customers. I assumed the customers left and the workers went to work at another part of the store. I went to look for my mom and dad in the kitchen area of the store where they were when I left. They weren't there. I tried texting them and calling them, but my phone strangely had no signal. I brushed it off as a bad signal. It happens, I said, trying to convince myself that it was normal. Then I went around the whole store. I did a full circle. I looked in every section. I found nobody. 
Now this is when I started to panic inside but stayed calm on the outside. You might be asking, why didn't you just walk out and go and see if your parents' car was still there? I don't know. That didn't cross my mind. I never even saw that as an option. I didn't ignore it. It just didn't cross my mind. Maybe it was the panic. Maybe it was something protecting me from something out there. Maybe it was something that wanted to keep me in there with it. I honestly don't know why, but I did three full circles. I don't know why I remember that number so clearly. But the store was quiet. The music they had been playing when me and my family first walked in was now replaced by silence. Replaced by the only sound of my footsteps. It's still unnerving when I remember how my footsteps were the loudest thing in that store. It was quiet and calm, too quiet and calm. I began to panic more inside, but I kept my composure. What if they left me behind? What if they forgot about me? I can't call anyone. I felt like I was being followed and watched. It felt like something was stalking me like it's prey. I felt so uneasy and alone. It felt like I was suffocating, though I had a whole store to myself. Something felt eerie and uncomfortable. I felt so strange and not there mentally. It finally clicked in my head that I was just going in circles with no end. A thought popped into my head out of thin air. Go back to the bathroom. I went with my intuition and went back to the bathroom. Go back to the stall. I followed my intuition again. I sat on the toilet silently. After about three minutes or so, I checked my phone. I had signal again. I was so relieved. I texted my mom immediately. I was so scared that she wouldn't answer or that the text wouldn't go through, but it did. Moments later, she replied. Our conversation went like, Mom, where are you? In the kitchen area, same place. I gathered up my courage to go and check again. I walked out and the first thing I noticed, the energy and the vibe was back to normal. The next thing I noticed was that I saw employees again. I saw the customers I had seen before again, shopping still. The music was back on. There was noise again. I quickly made my way to the kitchen area. I saw my mom and dad and I approached them and asked, where were you guys? My mom asked, where were you? We've been waiting for a while now. It felt like I hadn't seen them for a long time. I came looking for you too, I said to them. We never saw you pass by or anything, my mom said, and gave me a confused look. How long have I been gone? I asked my mom. Like 10 minutes. It felt longer than that. I felt cold and weird again. I got goosebumps on my arms. I told my mom I didn't feel good and she said, don't worry, we're going home now anyways. We checked out and left. As we drove away, I looked back at the store from my backseat car window. It felt like something there was saying goodbye to me as the store faded from the view. I don't go to that store anymore. My parents rarely go. Even now, when I pass by that store, I feel sick to my stomach. What the heck? Tell me why this reminds me of the movie Coraline. Like the double realities. Oh my goodness! Like the little closet little door opening for me it was like the bathroom stall was that the portal like what was that i don't know so many questions here but like you said it could be hallucinations or maybe you fainted but the thing is you would have remembered waking up and being unconscious on the floor or something but you were conscious the whole time so what the heck and another thing, I've never heard the expression of the back rooms. So now I know what I'm going to be researching tonight. It's Saturday night, so I know what I will be researching. Me and my blanket over here typing away. But seriously, now I need to know what this is. But thank you so much for writing in. This really has me thinking and questioning my freaking existence. But thank you so much. <laughs> So that was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Next week is officially Halloween season all month, October. Just, I feel it. I feel it in my blood, you know? Like, I just feel the spookiness is more official. But I can't wait for you guys to see what I have in store for you guys for the Halloween season. I can't wait and I hope you guys enjoy it. Oh, I'm so excited. So definitely subscribe so you guys can see what I have for you guys. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.